And we're back, and we're going to take a look at an RC circuit, um, one that has a resistor and capacitor in it, where everything's in series, and there's also a battery. Okay, so the, the circuit diagram that we're talking about is something like this, uh, where there's a switch, and when you close that switch and connect the battery, uh, that will start the clock. So as we know, um, RC circuits are time dependent. Um, these are a little trickier than just having resistors, where everything's nice and constant, and uh, this is also the type where we have to do, uh, or be able to do it, a derivation and actually figure out how the charge and, and current vary with time. So, to kind of review what happens when you connect the battery, um, you know, the battery has voltage difference, and when you have voltage difference, you can also create an electric field. The electric field then whips through the wires, it, and it's the field that jumps the gap for capacitors. Uh, you don't have any current, of course, going through that. Um, the gap in plates or spheres or cylinders and so charges build up and it takes time for charge to build up and as charge builds up on the capacitor uh, the current actually starts to decrease okay and the reason for that is uh, through Kirchhoff's rule for series where we have this voltage rule so the, the voltage of the battery always has to be equal to the sum of the voltage of the resistor plus the capacitor. So as the capacitor charges up, that means the voltage is also building up on your capacitor, and since these always have to add up to the same number, that means the voltage across the resistor actually goes down, which means the current decreases. Okay. So that's kind of conceptually what's going on here. And ultimately the, the current will die off because of the capacitor. Now it's this voltage equation that we use to actually go ahead and write down the equation for the circuit. So what I'll do here is start us off and uh, the rest of this video I, I just want to go ahead and, and work through the derivation with you. Um, this, this tends to cause people some issues, but after you see it a few times it's, it's really not too terrible. It's mostly algebra. Okay, so we know how to find voltage for resistors, and we know how to find voltage for capacitors. Now since our goal is to figure out what's the uh, charge as a function of time, and also what's the current as a function of time, we need to make a substitution in here where we know our definition for current in the first place. It's the QDT the rate at which charge is moving through your wires. Okay, so we're just going to substitute that in. And it looks something like that. <laughs> so we have a, a first order differential equation. And uh, what we always try to do is you always want to try to separate the variables. And in this case we'll be able to so I, I like to just try to isolate the derivative in the first place and see what you got. Uh, so we're going to have the, the battery, we have to subtract off the Q over C, and I'll divide through by the resistance, just to get that out of the way. Um, we can bring the time up on the right hand side. Okay. and so. In order to separate the variables, the only way to really do it is if you divide through by that whole parentheses. Okay. So in, in this form, we can go ahead and integrate. This is the only step of calculus that we'll have to do. And we also need limits on our integrals. Um, the time side is the, the easier one, where when you close the switch, that starts the clock. Time equals zero. And we're just going to let it run for however long. It doesn't really matter. Now corresponding over here, for charge, the capacitor starts off uncharged. Okay, so charge starts at zero, and it goes to some final charge after that time period has run off. Okay, we're trying to solve for that final charge. So the right-hand side is the easier of the two. That'll just give us our, our time interval. And on the left, um, it's 
it works in our favor, the fact that that first term right there is just a number. Those are constants. So that's not going to mess us up. Effectively, we've got dq over q. So we're going to have a natural log for that antiderivative. It's the natural log of, of the entire denominator. We have to evaluate this. Okay. And uh, as a lot of people point out in class, um, we also have a case of chain rule here. Okay, we, we have to count for this, this factor of negative 1 over RC that goes along with the variable. So that means we have to put a negative RC out front. Okay, that, again, that's chain rule. So in the end, what we have is uh, the, the rest of this will just be algebra. We're trying to solve for the, the charge after our time period has ticked off. Um, you take these, that negative RC and just divide through by it. Okay, so let's just work the left-hand side. Um, we have the natural log of q over r minus we put in q final. And then subtract what we get when we plug in 0 for charge. We just have that one term left. Okay. Uh, we can rewrite this. Since we're, we're subtracting logs. Nothing tricky. Uh, let's see, a factor of 1 over r is going to go away. Um, that will simplify a little bit inside. Our first term is just going to be 1. And we're going to have q final over cv. Okay. And let's see, last but not least, we e both sides. And we see that we have exponential behavior. Okay. So every yeah, things are definitely not constant. It's kind of a strange thing, you know, this E pops in. And when we find finally solve for the final charge, let's go ahead and write down that final answer. Um, C V, Q equals C V, that's that's promising. <laughs> And then uh, we have this 1 minus e that comes in. So this is our charge as a function of time right here. Okay. It, um, if we try to get a picture of it, if we, if we plot that, we notice if we plug in 0 for time, we'll have um, 1 minus one up there, and so it starts at zero. That's good. That's our initial condition. And then if time gets big, um, that second term drops out, but we still have that first term left over. So it approaches a maximum charge. It approaches that exponentially. A maximum charge is just CV. Okay, so that tells us because it's in series, if we go back to the actual picture, um, because the series with the battery, yeah, it, it can match the battery. And when that happens, there's no more voltage difference left in the circuit. Because if you think about it, um, the battery is pumping a current around like this. So that top plate is going to be negative, and the bottom plate's, or positive, I'm sorry, and the bottom plate's going to be negative. So it's as if you have two equal voltages lined up against each other. That's why the that's why the uh, current dies off um, when you hit that maximum charge. Speaking of current, we can derivatize this charge solution that we just got. <coughs> the first term is constant, so that drops out. And so uh, we're left with um, negative CV a factor of negative 1 over rc comes down. And we have our exponential. So our current is a function of time. 
is, uh, let's see, there's the C's drop out, is V over R, and it's Ohm's law, but then it's exponential. So what that shows is as the current increases, <laughs> I'm sorry, as the charge increases on the capacitor, uh, the current does the opposite. The current starts big, V over R, and it dies towards zero over time. It's exponential decay. Um, keep in mind, one other thing I'll, I'll point out here is uh, we have the so-called time constant, which is RC. So literally, we, could, we can pick and choose our resistors and capacitors um, and make this charge and current change as quickly or as slowly as we want. That's a nice feature to, to you know, be able to have control over. And the other thing is, um, the, these graphs that I drew could equally be the voltage of the capacitor as a function of time and the voltage of the resistor as a function of time. They have exactly the same behaviors um, as the charge and the current. That, that's where the voltage comes from for those two components. Okay, so in the end, you know, the, these solutions are the most important thing. Just understand the behavior of the circuit. Uh, but, yeah, we, we're going to have to be responsible for being able to, to do all this math on our own, to, to do, actually do this derivation. So, hopefully as you see this a few times and try it on your own a few times, um, it, it will begin to make some sense and uh, you'll feel more comfortable with it. Again, it's, it, there's only one step of calculus, the rest is algebra, and in the end we get these exponential behaviors. So I hope this helps, and until next time, we'll see you later.